This book definitely read like if Dresden Files and Mistborn had a baby. Hey booktube, it's V. One day on Twitter, Daniel Green decided to give away his debut novella to literally any small booktuber who asked for it. So I decided to ask for it. I read it and I have feelings that I am happy to share with my 600 and something subscribers and whoever the hell else watches this channel. I go into this book with two very strong biases. One, I love Daniel Green's channel. He has a level of analysis that I would love to get to in my own videos one day, but I also have a bias against self-published books. Most of the books that I've tried to read that are self-published, mostly on Kindle Unlimited, are complete garbage. They're basically first drafts that somebody decided should get published. But I also know that there's a lot of books that were self-published and actually turned out really great. And I'd love to discover more of them. And I've been suggested a couple by friends that I will get to eventually. Now with these two very strong biases in mind, I decided that they probably cancel each other out. And so hopefully this review will be objective and helpful for you to decide if you want to buy the book or not. Too Long Didn't Watch, I enjoyed the book, but there were a couple things that I think could have been done a little bit better. This is a debut work, so I don't think that they're deal breakers at all, and I think that this was a solid start to a fantasy series that I'm very interested in continuing. I'm gonna talk about what I thought was done really well, what I think could be done better, and I'm gonna touch on a little bit of a controversy because apparently Daniel Green's dry sand affected himself, and I know y'all like tea. My absolute favorite thing about this book is the world. This gritty authoritarian theocracy definitely thinks of itself as being lawful good. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? It's a society that demands complete cooperation and loyalty to the government. And any sort of deviation is highly frowned upon and severely punished. You're not gonna get a chance to make the same mistake twice. This book definitely read like if Dresden Files and Mistborn had a baby. We start out with this detective story where people are trying to solve crime that nobody understands what's going on and then have to work in this extremely rigid structure that is their society. I pictured the entire scenery in this book to be really dark, kind of like when you go to a place that has a lot of smog and it's sunny outside, but it's not really sunny outside. Kind of like my soul. And basically that's the whole mood. I thought that the pacing in this book was on point. I never felt like the story lingered too long. Each scene was given just enough time and attention to really validate its place in the story. I feel like this is easier to do in novellas than it is in long epic fantasy series that take forever to get to the point. And for being such a wheel of time stan, I am very proud of Daniel for not giving us these endless descriptions of tapestries. Bravo. So now for the things that I was less excited about. I don't think that the side characters were as fleshed out as they could have been. They were just kind of there to make the story go along, but it wasn't as bad as some other examples I've seen. Like if you've watched my Elantris video, the side characters in there were much more poorly written than the side characters in this book. This may or may not have had anything to do with the fact that this is a novella and we get a lot less time to connect and experience time with the characters. And for me, that means that I have less of an opportunity to start caring about them. I feel like I cared about the main character a lot, but the other ones I could just take or leave for the most part. Without spoiling anything, there was also this one scene that really had early game Murphy and Dresden vibes, you know, where they don't quite trust each other. Um, that was a lot of fun to read, but it also sort of felt derivative. That's not really a negative though, because literally everything is derivative. Even though the author did a really great job of not having a lot of info dumps, there was this one scene that was much more show than tell. It had to do with somebody's tattoos. And I think that this is like a big flashing neon light that these tattoos are gonna be important sometime later. But I feel like they could have been described a little bit more subtly. This is probably because I've read Stormfront, which is the first book in the Dresden Files like four times. And the thing that that book does really, really well, and it sort of like raised my expectations for literally everything else I read, is that it doesn't have info dumps that aren't also an action scene. And it's mostly the character doing something and then little tidbits of information as it becomes important come into play instead of the characters doing something just to like be doing something. But we're really spending all of our time in this paragraph talking about this guy's tattoos and describing them. Again, this is a debut novel, so it's not gonna be perfect. And I'm somebody who reads and critiques books for fun. So I'm probably a little bit more picky than the average reader might be. I know this is water, but pretend it's tea. There's some controversy because Daniel Green replied to a review that somebody left for his book and apparently you can't do that no matter what the circumstances. I am all for reviewers being able to say whatever the heck they want about a book and to have their own feelings from how they experience the book. And I don't think that this reviewer did anything wrong and probably gave some helpful information to help people who might not necessarily want to read a book that involves main characters who are cops and how they sort of disregard rules and think that they like know everything. Obviously we all know how that's flawed. But Daniel decided to clarify that this is the beginning of a character arc in a story where the cops who are the main characters 
basically think that they can do whatever they want and then slowly they realize how messed up that is. Then book Twitter did what book Twitter does and decided to make a big deal out of that. Some say that he made a big deal. So it's kind of like a Streisand effect thing where if you say anything, it's just gonna backfire and blow up in your face. But in today's climate, especially for somebody who makes their living on BookTube and their platform is basically their livelihood, I can totally see why he did it. The BookTube community has in the past tried to cancel books that they have never read before because apparently they're problematic. And I could definitely see why Daniel Green would want to avoid getting canceled like that because people are dumb and they don't read the books and they don't look at the total context of the book. Now, if you don't want to read a book with this sort of context, more power to you, I respect your decision. But Daniel needed to protect his brand. If you're wondering where I'm getting this from, it's the whole Blood Air controversy. Blood Air was a YA book that got dragged through the mud by some other authors in the booktube community and book twitter communities who shall not be named but you can google that stuff it's out there some that still have yet to apologize for what they did and it's pretty easy to see that if a debut author that nobody knew anything about was bullied into pulling their book with the intent of making them cancel their own book then what kind of mess is it going to be if an established booktuber who is trying to do this as his career and has been doing this as his career gets pulled through the mud it's going to be even worse. And <sighs> I think that everybody who's like, don't go into reviewer spaces is completely missing the point. I know that not all reviews are objective, but I really don't think that star ratings are objective either. I would personally give this book like a four out of five because it was good. It was enjoyable, but it wasn't perfect. I really love this world and I am so excited to dive deeper into it and get to know it a little bit better before it changes. If you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button and join the Cap Nation. We'd love to have you. I post bookish videos kind of every week. I'm trying to put out more, but you know, life. Like, share, subscribe on all your social media. And if you think that I suck at this, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to suck better next time. Bye.